The economy is, is in a crazy time right now. Unemployment is at an all-time low. We're getting the jobs report coming in tomorrow or today uh, when the show airs. Empl- unemployment is at 3.6%, very low. A lot of companies you're seeing raise money to like McDonald's is now paying $17 an hour. But guess what? The United States military, you're not immune to what's going on in the world world. So right here in this episode, you guys and girls can see the title, how the economy is affecting military recruitment. Myself, 19 years, almost 19 and a half years, retiring here from the United States military. Spent a lot of time in the military, enlisted, done 19, well, pretty much 20 years here in the service um, in the United States Navy. So I can speak on this topic very well. And before I was in the military, I had a job at Domino's Pizza. But right here, how the economy is one big machine and the military is not immune from it. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and children of all ages, you're now tuned into the Prince of Investment coming to you, girls, guys, and girls live all the way from the beautiful city and state of Denver, Colorado. Don't forget to hit that like, subscribe, comment, and share button. And as always, I don't have a lot of time, and I definitely know you guys and girls don't have a lot of time, so we're going to jump straight into it. So, ladies and gentlemen, you guys and girls seen the headlines. The military is having a hard time recruiting. Why is this? The United States Army came out and said that they don't think they're going to make their 50% of their goal for this year as far as recruitment. On top of that, the military is bleeding out great talent every day, whether people are retiring or separating. Why is this happening? Ladies and gentlemen, what's going on in the economy? Myself, I've been serving the United States Navy military for ever, uh, ever since 2003. And in 2003, all the way to now, the military is just like the stock market. It has times of expansion, it has peaks, retractions, troughs, and expansion again, those business cycles. When the economy has a chance of doing very well, meaning low unemployment, high jobs, high paying jobs, the military always struggles. In economical downturns back in 2008, when we had the housing market crash, followed by a stock market crash, all those things started to happen. You've seen military's um, enlistments and recruitment start to peak. Coming in 2009, 2010, the military had to force people out of the military. Now today, they're doing everything they can to keep people in the military. Why is this happening? Ladies and gentlemen, I'm doing this episode to show you that the economy is one big machine. And as the machine moves, it affects everything around us. I read, I recently read a book here about a couple of weeks or a month ago that was called Economics and One Lesson. I can't remember the author's name, but essentially it was... I think it was written probably like in the 40s, 1940s or something like that. But it was a great book. The reason why it was a great book, because it showed how one person's misery is another person's triumphant win. One person's trash is another treasure. We hate the rain, but we love the fruit that come from the ground because of the rain. So one thing has to happen to another. One thing is moving, you know, how everything moves is one big machine. So when you're looking at times of un- high unemployment, you're seeing military recruitment numbers go up. The military can be picky. The military can be choosy, right? But in times of economical upswings, like right now you're seeing unemployment is very low, employers are starting to compete. That's why McDonald's is paying $18 an hour. I remember my first job at Domino's Pizza, it was $5.25. And I remember when I got that raise to $6 and I got that blue shirt, oh man, you couldn't tell me a thing. But now look at McDonald's walking in the door, $18 an hour. So what happened? When when unemployment is low, employers compete. They have to come in with things like, hey, you know, we'll pay for your college. Hey, you can do hybrid work. No, you can do remote work. No, we're going to give you 401ks. No, we're going to match your 401k. Hey, we'll pay for some of your school. All these type of incentives when unemployment is low, employers start to compete. Now, what you're seeing in the military, a lot of uh, sailors, Marines, airmen's um, coasties are saying, hey, you know what? They're being pulled from every day to go off and get another job. The military has to find a creative way and a better way of incentivizing staying into the military, which they start to do with they start doing enlistment bonuses, re-enlistment bonuses, all up to a hundred grand just to stay in, just to come in, sign another contract. Here comes the bonuses, right? That's one thing they start to do. Once the economy starts to slow down, they will take away the bonuses. But also look at the military base pay. Military base pay usually moves at 1% or 2% a year that it goes up. The military base pay has to be competitive. 
So one of the things that the military had over a lot of people and a lot of companies is that it had a um, uh, the benefits. But now you're seeing companies are starting to boast up the competitive labor market. They're starting to boast up their benefit packages. But here in um, one of the things that people have over the military that they not don't have over the military, but there's one of the main reasons why the military struggle is only 23% of the population really qualifies to come into the military. When I was very young, I always thought the same cliche term was, hey, join join the military or go to jail. That I thought that it was, you know, right there with each other. But no, it's not like that anymore. And it hasn't been like that for a while. Now you have to have certain health requirements. If you had asthma when you was a little kid, if you got flat feet, that may disqualify. If you had asthma, that may disqualify you. If you was diagnosed with, you know, mental illness, that may disqualify you. If you took an inhaler, that may disqualify you. Right now, marijuana is pretty much legal, but not legal at the same time. A lot of people indulge in marijuana, smoking and things like that. That itself will disqualify you. So you're looking at just the health ramifications is one. Number two, obesity. There's a lot of people out there um, who are a little oversized to start joining the military. Now, once you are in the military, you pass through boot camp, you're allowed to put on a little weight, but not to go crazy. But in that in those younger days, um, you've seen a lot of kids coming in, you know, childhood obesity and kids are not as active as they once were every generation. Our grandparents, you, you saw them saying they told our parents they were lazy. Now our parents were telling us we were lazy. Now we're telling our kids they're lazy. So every generation is becomes it becomes less and less physical. So doing push-ups, sit-ups, running a mile or two miles or three miles, that is starting to break down a lot of people. People are coming up with shin splits, knee problems. So people are not in the health condition to even come in. Um, another one is having a clean record, you know, having a clean drug record. Have you ever done drugs, not doing drugs, things like that, getting a waiver for marijuana? Now, who has a smoke marijuana by this time now in the newer generations? So you're looking at only a small percentage of only a quarter, a little bit under a quarter of the population actually qualifies to go to the military, or they might even have financial. I forgot. That's another one. A big one is financial. Some people already have kids. Finances may not be in order where they can't join the military. So 75% of the people you see walking around don't qualify to join the military once it's really set down and done. Um, out of the people that are left, out of that pool of 23% of the population that's left, you now have to compete with everybody across the globe. They're like, hey, dude, I can smoke a little weed and get a little job over here and I can um, do X, Y, Z. It's a new economy, ladies and gentlemen. When I was growing up, you didn't hear people saying they go, they could be an Instagrammer. They want to be a TikToker. Hey, I'm a YouTuber. I'm a podcaster. I'm a Uber driver. I'm a DoorDash driver. All these new economical resources that people can sit back and, hey, during the day, I take a part-time job and I do Uber and I also am a TikTok or whatever the case may be. The whole new economies that were created right upon our nose and right upon our eyes. This is what makes it very difficult for companies to start to compete. The younger generation, they're like, hey, I don't want to go off and do 20 years and make a base pay and BH. That doesn't sound like a great deal to me. You have to compete with the new economy. So you can see how the economy um you know, some people join because of the patriot, you know, patriotism. But even though with that patriotism, they want to be taken care of because they may come in, do four years, and they're gone. How can we retain our best talents when their counterparts are offering to double and quadruple their pay with little to no stress? People come into the military, they get these skills, and once they get these skills, employers start to reach out to them, tap them on the shoulder. Hey, you got that nice security clearance. You got that nice degree now. You got these nice certification. And most importantly, you have experience. We would love to hire you. Oh, what are you making in the military? $80,000? We'll start you off at one ten. What is that person going to say? Hey, man, I can get out of here making one ten, stay where I want to stay, live where I want to live, have the freedom to do whatever I want to do versus being in the military, um, picking orders, I didn't say choosing, but picking out what's given to you and things like that, right? So now it's a more competitive job market and more competitive economy for the military to uh, compete with. Now, this is what's going to happen. This is all to my comrades I see all the time who are separating from the military. They're walking off, getting those great Amazon jobs. They're getting the great Microsoft jobs, con uh, contracting jobs, all type of jobs, government jobs, starting their own companies, things like that. As we go forward... You can see the Federal Reserve, look at the unemployment numbers. 
they're expecting unemployment numbers to go up. Look at today's job report when it comes out. What is it going to say? They're expecting unemployment to go up. And when unemployment starts to go up, guess what companies start to do? They love to do a hiring freeze. And what do they do after the hiring freeze? If you was the last one in, you was the first one out. So, hey, you went off and you go get that hot new job and everything is going great. Economical things start to turn down. The companies start to tighten up their hiring policies. Then here comes the layoffs. We're going to lay off the first person who's just been here for six months, right, or a year. So those are the things you have to be very mindful of when you're looking to lay off, uh, you know, making economical downturns. Then that's the time when the military starts to lick their chops. Oh, wow. I remember back in 2010, we had school teachers, firefighters, people who police officers, people who had great professions enlisting inside, inside the United States Navy. I thought it was crazy. But at that time in 2008, you saw unemployment shoot through the roof and so many people was rushing in and the military had to push people out. When the economy goes down, the military takes away those bonuses and it licks its chops and say, hey, guess what? We'll pay for your school. We'll give you free health care and dental. You don't like the area you're living in? We'll get you out of this area. Just sign right here on the dotted line. Ladies and gentlemen, the military, I've done it for 19, 20 years, and I don't regret anything about it. Was there some hard times? Yes. Was there some easy times? Yes. Was the mil did the military catapult me to another level? Of course so. It took me out of my small town of Waynesboro, Georgia, which I love, but it taught me a whole new world. I learned the world about investing. I learned the world about credit. I learned about insurance. I met people all across the world. I got my associate's degree, my bachelor's degree, my MBA, all type of different licenses, able to travel around the world. It's what's brought me here to Hawaii and also to Denver, Colorado. So um, it's a great opportunity for a young man that's out there looking for a new way to gain some experience, meet some new people, and also serve their country because it does look pretty good on your resume when you serve and you, and you know serve your country because so many things you learn learn leadership learn how to work as a team you know how to take orders obey orders be on time all those great things right but ladies and gentlemen this episode today was uh brought to you i'm telling you brought to you like it's by a sponsor or something but it was brought to you because of i'm seeing these headlines dominate and i can speak on it but i didn't want to take up too much of your time until the next video podcast cartoon or whatever else crazy you see me doing around the globe my name is Prince Dax. This is the Prince of Investing. Peace, be safe. I'm out and thank you. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.